Welcome back. The newest mine in Sandersville has nothing to do with mining at all, but the Bitcoin mine is definitely making an impact on the city's economy. Last year, we took you inside the high tech facility and now it's expanding. And Anthony Montato got a tour today. He joins us in studio with a look inside. You guys, the facility is truly massive. Take a look at this. That's just the power station. In fact, like I said, it even has its own power substation just to help manage the 250 megawatt power output. That's about 10 times what it takes to power the entire city. There were some trees in a dirt field, right? It's come a long way and moving really quick. Fast forward two months and a sprawling tract of land is turning into a sprawling Bitcoin mine. We're halfway, you know, up the hill right here with uh, six buildings coming up. Each one as long as the Titanic, all of them housing computers just like this that crunch numbers all day to create Bitcoin. Think of cash for a digital age. That's what Bitcoin does. Um, so Bitcoin, unlike some of these other cryptocurrencies that have a CEO, there's no CEO of Bitcoin. CleanSpark Chief Communications Officer Isaac Holyoke says that's why the company's posted record profits. He says more people are buying in and they need to help meet the demand. So they're expanding their Sandersville facility to become the company's flagship. There is more energy in Georgia than there is use for that energy. Sandersville City Administrator Judy McCorkle says that creates an advantage for them. Since the city manages its own electric company, it reduces bills for everyone else. Homeowners could see the benefits on their property tax bill. Well, at some point, I could see that property tax being rolled back to almost nothing, almost zero percent, and that's huge for us. CleanSpark site manager Bo Ginn says those effects will be even stronger after they expand. We're sending over six figures back to the city each month, and you know that's going to be very significant uh, coming on post expansion. He estimates they'll pay $500,000 a month in taxes alone. That's about six million a year. That money is money that the city wouldn't be getting. You know, it's going to schools, to roads, to, to other community infrastructure that uh, you know may have been neglected for a while. Now, McCorkle told me they're considering building a hotel for when that new facility is finally up and running. Back to you. Thanks, Anthony. Clean Spark says they hope to have the facility up and running in the next few months.